So an exercise, you're talking about going up into altitude. Yeah. Pretty high, it's 5,400 meters or 5,550. 5, Don't so, forget that one. <laughs> in comparison, if you think of a Ryanair jet, it's about 30,000 feet. So it's about halfway up. Mm -hmm. So when you're looking up at a Ryanair jet looking down, you're halfway up. Um, how do you prepare for that? I think it's very important to strengthen, strengthen the breathing muscles. Yeah. It's very important to expose your body to low oxygen so that your body adapts to it to be able to cope with it. It's very important also when you're at, while you're at altitude is to breathe efficiently to improve alveolar ventilation. It's never really about the air that comes in through the nose or mouth. It's more about the air that gets down to the small air sacs in the lungs, the small little air sacs, the alveoli. And also in terms of the gas transfer from the lungs to the blood, and of course, more importantly, the blood to the tissues and organs. So we can do a simple exercise to uh, create a slight hypoxia response, but also a psychological stress. Um, I like this exercise. This is a pretty easy exercise, you know. Yeah. Now, you wouldn't do this if you're pregnant or somebody has panic disorder. They have to go easy, you know, but other than that, you give it a go. Okay. So I need you to stand up for this one, Carol. Yep. And so whenever you're ready, it's to take a normal breath in through your nose and out through your nose, pinch your nose and hold. Just jog for 10 paces holding the breath. So I know it looks very, very strange, but it's actually pretty effective. And then to let go, to breathe in and out through your nose, and now just gently walking, just gently walking. And this would be also a great exercise to bring into a warm-up pre-physical exercise. So in terms of helping to open up the nose, improving blood flow to the brain, activating a stress response, and the adaptations are pretty good because if you do a long breath hold, now you're not quite hypoxic yet, but we'll kind of start off easy and then we will build it up. See this, it's almost that like we're putting the body into a controlled stress and the body then makes adaptations and it then improves our ability to be able to push the body, but doing it controlled, we're not going to, there's no undue risk. So again, Caroline, take a normal breath in through your nose and out through your nose and pinch your nose and hold. And now jog for 15, 20 paces holding the breath. And keep jogging, keep jogging, keep relaxing, keep going, keep going, keep going. And then when you feel, say, 15, 20 paces, let go, breathe in through your nose and back down to a walk and now continue walking. And at some point during that, you might have felt involuntary contractions of the diaphragm, so it's helping to work that. It is increasing carbon dioxide in the lungs and blood, so it improves blood flow to the brain. So if you want to increase blood flow to the brain, this is a go-to exercise. If you want to open up your nose, if you want to help open up your lungs, but we're not there yet with hypoxic training. So to do that, it's about 50 or 60, but we're not sure if we're gonna do it today. Who knows, we'll see, we'll see. No pressure, Caroline, that's the main thing, yeah? So whenever you're ready, take a normal breath in through your nose and out through your nose and pinch your nose and hold, and to start jogging, holding the breath. And now jog a little bit faster. And you just keep relaxing into the body, into the body. So it's a psychological stress, it's a physiological stress. And what can we do? We just surrender to it. And it's all, always about tuning into the body as well. Just kind of getting that dose of stress that yet we know we're pushing it, but we're not pushing it too far. And then letting go. So you can let go there into the nose, and now just gently walking with normal breathing, in and out through your nose, with normal breathing. So I would say there you went hypoxic. Mm -hmm. Based on, you know, you can feel that stress there. Your nose now should be opening up. Um, and initially, always what I would say to people starting off is do a few easy ones first, just to see how do you do with them. But this is also a great one for somebody with a head cold, or if somebody was say feeling, if the mind was a little bit agitated, you know, sometimes people say meditate when your mind is agitated. You can't, for me anyway, people can't, cannot meditate when the mind is agitated. But do something like this because it disrupts thought activity, gets you out of our heads. Yeah. So do you want to do one more? <laughs> that felt like Kilimanjaro at the top. I was like... No, no, no. You're, you're about three quarters way up Ooh. Kilimanjaro. You're another three quarters. Let's go one more. When your legs go jelly, we know you're on the right track. <laughs> <Okay>. <laughs> All right. Go in. Take a normal breath in through your nose and out through your nose and pinch and hold and start jogging. And then just jog a little bit faster. You keep going, you keep pushing, keep going, keep pushing. 
and push it as far as you can, but to be able to recover within two breaths. So push it as far as you can and recover within two to three breaths. Good, good. And then back down to a walk. Good stuff, Caroline. So for anybody who's going to practice it, don't practice that if you're pregnant. If you have anxiety or panic disorder, you have to go easy. So, and also if you're over 60, it's a quite a stressful exercise. So I would say you're probably better off not doing it. So, you know, there is limitations in terms of age, state of health, and also breathing patterns, but it's a great little exercise. Um, this is an exercise that you start to realize there's something in breathing. And for me, Caroline, any of us, when we're doing a breathing exercise, if we can feel something in it, we'll stick with it. Mm -hmm. So, you know, what would you use that exercise for? Preparation for, you're not just going to Kilimanjaro, actually, you're going no, to- No, don't base... Kilimanjaro, Everest Base Camp this time. Everest Base so Camp. So on to the next one, but this is the training I used for Kilimanjaro and I had no altitude sickness and slept really well every night. So yeah, Great thank stuff. you. Practical <laughs> application. So for any of you, you don't have to be climbing Mount Everest, by the way. <laughs> this is also used in sea level. So especially if you have stuffy nose, agitated mind, or if you want to just get that little bit of an edge in terms of physical performance, instead of having to push your body harder to reach those limits, restrict your air intake and move with restricted breathing. And that will also cause adaptations. Enjoy.